Hey, what's cracking everybody? On today's video, I'm taking a look at Anduin OS. And uh, Anduin OS is uh, developed by an ex-Windows uh, developer. So uh, it's meant to look a lot like Windows, but uh, it's actually uh, Linux. And you can see right here on the website, it says uh, Anduin OS is a custom Ubuntu-based Linux distribution that offers a familiar and easy to use experience for anyone moving to Linux. And it is version 1.4.0. So you can download, look at the docs, check all versions and their change logs. Why choose Anduin OS? Ready to use, friendly interface, root and privacy, ecological perfection, open source, containerized and right here so they do have a version 1.1 LTS the one that we're looking at is 1.4 I believe it's 1.4.1 so uh, let's head on over to the virtual machine uh, get it installed and take a look at it and the OS Right, and we are here on the virtual machine now and you can see on the desktop we have a uh, install Anduin OS 1.4.0 so let's go ahead and click that okay and it looks like it opened up the uh, ubiquity installer so our language already is selected as English I'll click on continue and our keyboard layout is also English US click on continue and download updates while installing Anduin OS, of course. And install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. And it is preparing Ubuntu drivers. All right, installation type. This computer currently has no detected operating system. What would you like to do? Erase disk, it's already selected. And I'll just click on install now. Now, I haven't added any user info, so I assume it's going to ask for that next. Okay, where are you? Los Angeles. Click on continue. Who are you? This is where I add my info. I am test. And my password is super complicated. You'll never guess it. And just for fun, I'm going to log in automatically. Click on continue. All right, and it's almost finished copying files. So I wonder if we got a little head start. Anyways, while it's installing, I'll go ahead and pause the video. And then when we come back, we'll take a look at Anduin OS. Okay, the installation only took about four or five minutes and it has it installed correctly. So what we have here is Anduin OS. You can see the desktop. It is a standard layout with uh, icons. On the upper left, you have a panel on the bottom. And this panel is meant to resemble something similar to like a Windows 11. Since, like I said, uh, the developer of this system is a ex-developer of Windows itself. So uh, he built this system to give it a uh, comfort for uh, Windows users to cross over to Linux. But you can see uh, we do have our system tray. This is a GNOME desktop, I believe, by the way. It's either going to be GNOME or Cinnamon, but it's highly customized. Well, we'll go through all that in a sec. But you can see right here in the system tray, we do have a time. And that opens up your uh, notifications and calendar. So, yeah, this is looking like Ubuntu uh, GNOME right here. And also you have right here uh, a volume rocker and an internet connection. So if you click on it. You also have your uh, power option. So yeah, this is this is uh, the system that you'll see on GNOME itself. And then you have your mounted devices. And of course, our uh, pinned applications are in the middle of the panel itself to resemble uh, Windows 11. So we do have software, files, Firefox, and this is your uh, app launcher or your menu applications launcher. And then we do have a uh, weather on the far left. So if you click on this, it'll open up your uh, weather app. All right, so uh, 
Let's look at this uh, software. So it should be the GNOME software. Give it a second to open up since it is the first time. Yep, and it is the uh, GNOME software store. So basically you'll be installing, uh, you know, apt or flat packs. But we'll confirm all that right now once it fully opens up. All right, it is fully opened up now. So uh, we can click on this uh, hamburger menu right here. Look at the about and it is software from the GNOME project. All right, and it shows you uh, right here. Right now we're on the explore. So from right here, you can just scroll down and, you know, find whatever you need to find. You have a button right here that says installed. And basically it's going to show you everything that's already installed. And then you have an update manager also right here. So system updates are available, but we're not going to do that right now. And then you can always go back or refresh. That's actually a refresh what it's doing. But we'll go back to uh, explore. And you can see right here, if you want to search, this is a magnifying glass and then it opens up the search. I think this should be opened up by default always just to make it easier for everyone. Because a lot of times, you know, you could be stuck looking for this and uh, you wouldn't even know it's over here in the corner. Because when you're on the update panel, it's actually a, it, it serves a different function. And under installed and explore, it serves as a magnifying glass. So it's a little confusing. Anyways, this is the known software app. So yes, sir. Now we'll take a look at uh, files. So it should be just standard files for uh, GNOME. It is files from the GNOME project, 49.0. And you can see right here, you have the basic layout. You have your desktop, documents, downloads, music, pictures, public, templates, and videos. And if you want to change the layout, you can just click right here, give you that layout or you could change it back to that layout. And if you want to see hidden files, there's no option in the right click menu, but you do a control H on your keyboard and it will show you all of the uh, hidden folders. And if you want to hide them again, control H again. All right, then we have our friendly Firefox, which we'll see on most of the Linux desktop environments. And let's take a look at the help, go to about, and it is 140.4.0, extended support release. So this is the Firefox ESR that you'll, you'll typically see this like on Ubuntu, I mean uh, Debian, Debian or Fedora, things like that. When you see the extended support release, All right, now let's take a look at the application menu. So opening this up, it does have some similarities to uh, to the uh, Windows 11, you know, just without any of the ads and stuff like that. So, you know, you do have all, you know, a list, a list of apps that are right here, but there is a button right here that says all apps. So if you click on this, it'll give you everything in alphabetical, well, it's supposed to be in alphabetical order. So that's it right there doesn't look like there's much uh, installed on here. And there's also a back button to go back to the main features. You do have a search right here. You have your uh, session manager. It looks like settings right here, a terminal and file manager. And of course this user. So let's take a look at the settings. Being that we are on the GNOME desktop, you can see right here, on the left side of the settings, you have all of your options. So anything you need to change on your system, you can just select it from right here on the left. So, you know, you got your network, Bluetooth, display, sound, power, multitasking, appearance, Ubuntu desktop, apps, notifications, search, online accounts, well-being, mouse and touchpad, keyboard, color management, printers, accessibility, privacy, and system. So I believe on, if we click on system, it'll give us another about. There it is right there. And device name and operating system and the NOS. Got your hardware specs, processor, memory, disk capacity, and system details. So you can click on this and get a, it's pretty much the same thing. Just in a pop out window. And there is another official about and it is settings, the known project. 
All right, then we do have some uh, desktop icons. We have a home folder, trash can, and a mounted device. And on the right click, of course, you could uh, check your display settings, desktop icons. Uh, you could change the background. You can open the terminal here. You can show desktop and files. You can arrange the icons, select all, create a new folder or file. So it's a pretty uh, standard uh, right click menu. All right, and this is uh, Anduin OS. Um, we did see a terminal, so let's see what terminal they're using. It's gonna be the GNOME terminal. But of course, it's always good to uh, confirm that. Well, it just says terminal, Christian Hergert. So I'm not even sure what this is. It's, it's terminal, so all right. We'll just take it for its word. Let's see, do we have HTOP installed? And we do have HTOP. Let's, uh, let's try to make this bigger. There we go. You can see on our memory, we are using one and a half gigs out of four. And on our load averages, it's all zeros dot somethings. So it's pretty low. And I got to say, so far, while using the system itself, everything's been snappy. I haven't felt any lag whatsoever at all. It's all smoothness. All right, we'll go ahead and close this terminal. Okay, as I said earlier, this is uh, something that's meant to get uh, Windows users off of Windows and onto Linux to give them a more familiar playground so they can uh, get used to the environment. Uh, you know, as of lately, because, uh, you know, Microsoft, they're just being stupid as always doing the things that they do and uh, ending support for Windows 10 is causing a lot of backlash and all of the uh, enforcements that are being done with Windows 11, you know, just ev everything they're doing over there is just uh, it's just wrong. So, uh, you know, a lot of people are finally starting to wake up and uh, starting to make the move. And, you know, that's a good thing. You know, it could also be a bad thing because, you know, they're they're used to what they're used to over at Windows, their solid environment. And by solid, I mean like a like a like a, a one a one point of view way of looking at computing. And now that they're going to be coming over to Linux, you know, it's just multiple views over here. You know, there's 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 just so much to deal with. And when you've had the mindset of working with a Windows computer for so long, it kind of transforms you into that into a single-minded person, or at least thinking that way. I mean, I, I can see it in the comments already. A lot of people talking about why this, this, and why that, that, and you know, it, it you shouldn't. It should. Those questions should never be asked because we're on Linux. We can do what the hell we want to do. <laughs> so, uh, but you know. It is what it is. You got to take the good with the bad. Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I looked at Zorin OS the other day, and now I'm looking at this. I think I might take a revisit to uh, Linux Mint because Linux Mint is the originator of uh, transforming uh, Windows users into Linux users. It's the one system that got me off of uh, Windows. So uh, I think Linux Mint deserves another look because, uh, you know, the big exodus from uh from Microsoft that's coming over to Linux, you know, we got to help them out. Got to steer them in the right direction. Because, you know, I mean, there's already, a, you know, a million videos on YouTube about this stuff, you know. So I'm just I'm just giving my two cents on it. That's all I'm doing. You know, what I mean? it's nothing flashy here, nothing, no weird effects or nothing. It's just straight up looking at a system. Um, this is my first time ever looking at it, so we're we're experiencing this together. Uh, that's the way I like to look at systems. I don't like to look at them first. I like to experience it all, and like if I'm a new user, that's the whole point of these uh, first looks. You know what I mean? Is to look at them as a new user and get that feel. You know what I mean? From the gate, get that feel, that new user feel, and I re I'm recorded while I do it. It's pretty much all that I'm doing. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please go ahead and uh, subscribe. If you uh, like the video you just saw, please hit that uh, like, thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, by all means, give it a thumb down. It's all fair game here on Linux Hub. 
And that's going to do it for this video. And I'm out.